I have a problem. Here, let me show you. Okay, so here's me, right? Uh, there's me. Like that, okay. And the problem is my phone, because I am on my phone way too much at night. It keeps me up too late. But I also need my phone in bed sometimes to set an alarm or to send a quick text, do the New York Times games, you know, productive stuff. But I'm in college now, and I no longer have my mom to, at a reasonable hour, tuck me in, kiss me goodnight, and take away my TikTok toy. So I have to make a robot that'll do it for me. The taking my phone part, not the other stuff. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, I think yeah, so. Yeah, that makes that sense makes to sense. me. <laughs> Okay, so I've drawn out some designs of what I want to do, but it's time to actually start making the thing. And the first system that I want to work on is the one that actually grabs the phone. I want to make it look like a robot hand, so when it comes up, it'll like grab the phone, like that. I've designed some stuff in CAD for that, so it's time to actually make it. So here's our initial prototype of the robot hand. Uh, there are a few issues. I think the thumb placement is a little bit weird, but it does fit my phone, so that's good. I'm gonna do a bit of a redesign and then we'll move forward with the actuation. Okay, so I think this is pretty much our final prototype for the hand, um, so I'm gonna write a quick test program for it and then we'll see how it looks. I have a very basic wiring set up here, um, just a switch connected to the ESP32. The switch is in like the wrist of the hand, I guess. And then this servo, which operates the fingers, that's also connected. So we should see the fingers move when I power the thing. Oh, there you go. And then, <laughs> it's very, very slowly closing the finger. The point is when I close this, it grabs the phone. And then when I open it, it un grabs the phone, I guess. I'm gonna speed it up a little bit so it looks a little less weird. There you go. So when I do that, grabs it, uh, when I take it out, it opens it. That looks sick. Dude, that's so awesome. So now it's time to figure out actually what's gonna move this thing up and down. Okay, so I think I should, what is that? Whatever. So I think I should clarify what this robot is actually gonna look like. First of all, because I don't have much room in my dorm, it's gonna be mounted on the wall. And it also relies on the fact that my bed is raised. So at a certain time at night, that little robot hand is gonna come up and it's gonna demand my phone. Then when I give it my phone, it's going to lower back down so that I no longer have access to my phone. In the morning, again, at a specific time, it'll raise back up so that my phone can wake me with an alarm. The hand has already been made, but I need something that will raise and lower that hand. And that system is called a rack and pinion system. A rack and pinion system is kind of like two gears, um, but if one of the gears was flatter. So your pinion, which is the gear, is against the rack, which is like the flat gear that moves up and down. Now I need a really big rack for this, uh, about 24 inches long, and my 3D printer obviously can't can't print something 24 inches long, and it'd be a pain to put all that together. But I'm in college now, which means I have access to a laser cutter. So I cut out the rack out of acrylic with the laser cutter, which was really cool. And now it's time to put it all together, the hand and the raising system. So I'm thinking um, I'm gonna call this the gear operated uplifting propulsion system or the go up system for short. When I turn this on, this rack should move. Oh wow, I don't know, I guess I thought something would go wrong. Oh, that's what that was for. Guys, not only is engineering expensive, but it also costs a lot of money. And if you're 18 or under, I really think you should hear about this because this video is sponsored by a charity called Hack Club. There are a lot of kids and especially teenagers that want to get into engineering, but they can't because of cost or because they haven't found a community that they can thrive in. I know I've been there. Hack Club is here to fix that. For instance, right now they have a program called Blueprint, where if you design a project, they will give you the money to build that project up to $400. And then, depending on how long you worked on the project, you can earn prizes, like a free soldering iron or even a 3D printer. Again, this is all to help kids like you get into engineering. They also put on hackathons all the time all around the world, like the one I went to in San Francisco. And there I met over 100 kids who had designed and built open source projects because of Hack Club. I honestly wish I knew about this a long time ago. So if you're 18 or under and you're looking to get into engineering, then go to this link, you'll be sent some pretty cool Hack Club stickers, and you'll be brought to their website where you can see how to get started 
started with all of this. Now back to the project. Now that the physical mechanism for this thing is done, I can start working on the electronics. So I'm working on the electronics and it's been going great, but it's also been going terribly. Here's why. So the motor is able to move the rack and the hand up and down just fine, but the motor moves really fast, which puts unnecessary strain on different parts of the system. I, I want the motor to move slower. Now this is the computer that I'm using to control everything in this project. And unfortunately it can only output a digital signal, meaning on or off. To the motor, 12 volts or zero, full power or nothing. And I'm just trying to figure out how I can make it move at some speed in the middle. I think I have an idea. So if you're not into the whole learning thing, uh, that's okay. I have a Sudoku that you can work on. Just print that out, fill that out while I'm talking about pulse width modulation. Okay, so here's our chart, right? We have zero volts and we have 12 volts. We can give the motor one of these two, but we can't give it anything in between. But what if we switched between zero and 12 volts really fast? Would it effectively output a voltage that's kind of in the middle? Now you can do this and it's a technique called pulse width modulation. In pulse width modulation, the computer outputs voltage in what's called Called a duty cycle. So it switches between 0 and 12 volts really fast based on what percentage of time you want the pin to be high. A 50% duty cycle will have the pin high half the time. And this is what the graph for that looks like. It's switching about a thousand times per second. This is a 75% duty cycle graph and you'll notice that the pin is high about 75% of the time. It's kind of like we're giving the motor 9 volts here and it'll slow it down. Now I want to note that we're not actually giving the motor 9 volts so this won't work for all applications where you need to vary your voltage, but it does work in a lot of applications like slowing down a motor or dimming an LED light. The LED light thing is really interesting because if you video an LED light that's being dimmed in this way, sometimes it'll look like the LED light is, is pulsing. That's because of the way a camera works. This might happen because the camera is shuttering while the LED is in this off state, even though it doesn't look like it's off. Pretty interesting stuff. So now I've tested out all of my components and I need to put them together on what's called a printed circuit board, which is just a board that connects electronics together. So let's get started on that. Also, the Sudoku's impossible. By the way, I, I don't know why you tried it. So I've been testing out the different parts of this PCB, and for the most part it works. There are a couple of issues that I need to fix, but once I get my revised PCB, I'll be able to put all of this together. Okay, so here's the revised PCB, which seems to be working perfectly. That screws in right here. Now, here's everything that it needs to control. And there's actually a lot going on here, so I need you to pay attention, okay? Let me grab this. Oh, that, that feels kind of nice. All right, so the computer needs to control this servo. It also needs to take an input from this switch right here, and it needs to give power to this charger. The computer also needs to power this motor and take inputs from these two buttons and this knob. It also needs to take input from these two limit switches so that the computer can know whether the rack is up or down at any given moment. Also, the computer needs to take power from this voltage regulator. Now, at this point, you might be wondering, Will, what if you just don't give the phone to the robot? And that's where these two LED strips come in, but I'll explain that later. For now, I'm gonna finish wiring this up. Okay, so it's finally time to mount this thing. Um, unfortunately, I can't actually drill into the walls here, so instead I'm using six command strips. Also, it's later, so it's time to talk about these lights. So currently, I don't have a way to incentivize me to put the phone in the robot hand, or rather, disincentivize me from not putting the phone in the robot hand. But that's where these lights come in. So at the time where I'm supposed to give it my phone, if I don't give it my phone within like a minute, it's gonna flash these lights really bright. It's gonna be late at night, so that should be enough of a punishment to convince my monkey brain to give up the reels for that night. So now that I have that up, I can mount the lights and this little panel that I made to control the lights from up top. Okay, so picture this. The time is 10.25 and I'm getting ready for bed, okay? I lay down and I think, oh, I mean, one video couldn't hurt, right? So I pull up Instagram, right? And I watch one video and then, I mean, like one more, right? One more. And then all of a sudden, I'm set for another hour. I'm just scrolling and scrolling until at exactly 10.30.
this hand comes up and it demands my phone. Now notice this LED strip right here, okay? This essentially acts as a timer. Now if I give it my phone before the time runs out, then we're good. The lights return to normal and I can turn them off and I can go to bed. But let's say that I don't give it back my phone by the time this timer ends. I'm gonna give an epilepsy warning here too because it's like pretty atrocious. It does this. Now that's pretty awful, especially at night, and I think I'm gonna regret it, but as soon as I put my phone back in the holder, they turn off and the lights are back to normal. And then I can finally go to bed. Now here's some other parts of this robot that I think are pretty cool. Right here there's an emergency phone button, okay? So let's say it's late at night and I remember I need to text someone, I can just press this button and it'll bring back up the phone, right? Oh, this is still recording. I can do whatever I need to do, right? Send that text, and as long as I give it back to the hand, then we're all good. Something else kind of cool is that I can adjust these lights so I can make them really cool or really warm, and they turn on automatically in the mornings. I can also control the lights at this panel, and there's an RGB mode so I can make them whatever color I want, and I think that's all. I think I've successfully showcased the hand robot. All right, well, thanks for watching. If you wanna watch another one of my videos, you should watch this International Space Station tracker thing. I think it's pretty cool. I wanna say a huge thanks to my patrons who help me buy things that cost money, and also thanks to Hat Club uh, for sponsoring the video, but also just doing what they do. It's pretty cool. Also, feel free to ask any questions in the comments below about the project itself. I really like going into detail about this stuff, but sometimes it's hard to fit all of that in one video. So yeah, feel free to ask those. But that's it. This is the end of the video.